Okay, so you own an E60 or an E61, and you've got this display on your dash. It's telling you the brake fluid is low. There are two reasons why that could happen. One, it could just be that your brake pads have worn down to the point where the all the extra fluid that is flown uh, flown into the uh, pistons in the calipers has uh, drained the reservoir and taken the level down. Or you have a leak. In my case, uh, it ended up that I had a um, had a brake fluid leak and I could tell that because I topped off the fluid and I would press the brake pad the brake and it would slowly go to the floor which is telling me that the fluid is actually being pumped out of the system in this case um, I had to top the, the reservoir off a couple times and keep pumping because there was no fluid coming out anywhere until I had put uh, probably the better part of a pint through the system and it started leaking out just ahead of the left rear tire uh, and I'll show you why that is. Okay, trying to get good line uh, up here is uh, up by the, the uh, left side fuel tank. Uh, it's grimy, but it's actually in good shape. So basically here is a good section that I can connect to. Uh, it's, but obviously right now there's not really any way to get to what I need to get to. So my plan uh, that I formulated is to cut the line here uh, and then leave it clamped off so that I don't lose a lot of fluid and then install a splice in this section first and uh, come around with my spliced section and figure out where I need to put the other end of the splice down here um, to do that I'm going to bend this out of the way I'll bend th this line out into the into the area here so I have enough room to swing a uh, tubing cutter and uh, to get my um, flaring tool on this line. And so I went out in search of the right tools and parts to do what I needed to do and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I went down to the local auto parts store and they had some brake lines uh, but all of the brake lines they had had this uh, bubble flare. You can see it's pretty well named. It's actually rounded on top and it's the fittings that are used for this are the same as the ones on the car itself. If this will ever focus, which probably won't. Um, so a lot of people like to use those. Uh, the trick is you have to find the tool to make bubble flares and I decided I didn't have room to swing the tool that was required in the space I have. Um, so I decided to not use the bubble flare but to opt for the double flare which looks like this. Um, let me see if I can get a better... So you can see the difference. The double flare has a uh, inverted cone in the center section uh, that has actually got a corresponding cone inside the, uh, the the connectors that will provide the seal. So it's a very good system. It's both are perfectly adequate. Um, it doesn't really matter that it's not the same spec the car uses because this is just a splice in the middle of the tubing. The tubing is 3 16 uh, That's virtually the same as the metric that's used in the BMW, so pretty much a whole lot of vehicles use the 3 16 spec line, so that's good. So what I bought was a one-foot pre-prepared 
uh, line just to save me from having to make some uh, extra extra flares I bought a kit that has four uh, four splices uh, I bought this tool which is very different from a lot of the ones you see that have a little vice like thing those are very suspect you you can end up with really crooked and uh, unusable uh, unusable flares and they're difficult to use especially in tight places this tool is brilliant I've seen it used it's just head and shoulders above the other options uh, the downside is it only does 3 16 in this particular case but trust me buy this tool you'll be glad you did here's a look at the flares uh, of the splice itself and the the uh, tubing that it's going to mate to what I needed was a uh, a tubing cutter you want to make very good sharp clean cuts on the back of the um, on the the pipe that you're the the brake line that you're cutting otherwise you're going to end up with a buggered uh, flare that's not going to seal right so you need a tubing cutter it could be done with a another way you could saw it off and then file it flat and clean it up carefully and get away with it but this is just going to make it easier uh, the brake tool the the one that I bought at the parts store the auto parts store is much larger it I'm sure it's a great tool it's just too big to swing in the area I have to work in so I uh, ended up with the other one um, the other thing I was going to show you was the inside of this uh, this tool you can see that the um, how this is going to work this would be the end result but this um, this device has a uh, has the female portion of the form built into the tool here and you can uh, I've unbolted it okay so basically this has the um, this holds everything in place with these two bolts um, which are used to clamp down and set the depth that you're going to set your your pipe in so this clever little device here you can see through here it actually brings you can bring your pipe up to this line automatically just by feel by pushing it up tightening down these these bolts uh, with a 10 millimeter wrench and once that's snug you take this out and you use your form and I'll show you how all that works under the car the other thing to uh, think about is this uh, is the die you see this die that's built into the tool here has two ends and this end although I doubt it's ever going to focus properly um, is concave and that will form kind of a rounded almost looks like a bubble flare uh, whenever you compress the end of the tubing down into the die and then you flip it around and you use this one which you can see just is a flare and that pushes the uh, bubbled flare out into the proper double flare um, and it's just an amazing tool you'll you'll see how that works the trick is going to be uh, to cut this brake line somewhere in here um, and hopefully not make too much of a mess I've already got it clamped off with this so I should be able to cut it here I'll probably end up dropping some fluid from the upper part of the the hose but uh, basically as nasty as this line is it shouldn't be too hard to break it I'm just going to crimp it with these cutters and then just work it until it separates and with any luck I've pinched it shut here so it's not going to uh, not going to leak too much uh, too much being the key I'm gonna give it another pinch up here just to slow it down for now uh, I'm still gonna lose the same amount of fluid either way but it's uh, well, the trick now is to get this bent around and I'll have to reform this after the after the repair uh, but to get it bent around where I have access to this one 
straight section here where I'm going to use to put my clamp, uh, my my uh, my connection. So uh, this is not rusty. It's it's fine. Uh, that's nice. Um, so I'm going to get my my cutter in there. I should have room to swing it. You can see why I need a small small one because there's really not a lot of room to work there. Okay, there's a slight change of plans. Uh, having the tube out in this area look like I had enough room, but even this little cutter is just a little too big to swing in that area. So I just bent the tubing over here between the exhaust and the subframe and the gas tank where I should be able to rotate it uh, pretty well. So I've, I've got the got the tubing cutter in place and I'm tightening down the cutter and we'll start rotating it and incrementally tightening it down uh, until I cut the entire tube off so I won't make you suffer through that whole process it's going to take a little while because of the location I've managed to cut it off uh, you can just barely see the end of the tube here uh, I will pull it over into the correct position, uh, but I'm going to do that after I get the um, after I get the splice on it that that one foot patch uh, tube hooked up to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and flare this now and get that done, and then we'll move on to the next step. Here's one of the most important parts of this repair because you get this wrong, you're going to be kicking yourself don't forget to slip the nut on before you do the flare or you get to cut off your nice new perfect flare and start all over and put the nut on because you just have to do it that way so I'm going to slide this up and seat it up here uh, where it'll kind of stay out of the way and then I will place the tool okay I'm going to put the uh, I've got it loosened up here as you can see uh, I'm going to put the positioning uh, adapter in there and then I'm going to slide it and you can see why I got this tool because nothing else was really going to fit here so uh, I just got to get this opened up and slide it home until the tube is pressing against the uh, that positioning adapter and then tighten down these 10 millimeter bolts by hand initially and then with a wrench which will hold the brake line firmly in place while I'm doing violence to the end of it, so there's no way I would have gotten one of those vice style tools in here at all. I would have ended up having to pull the whole brake line and had to drop the subframe and everything else to do it. So I've taken out the taken out the uh, positioning adapter, and I'm opening up this little handy dandy uh, tub of uh, lubricant, that, this dye lubricant that they give you. So I'm dipping the bubble end of the, or the, the rounded end of the, the forming dye uh, in there and I will basically now, I will turn it with a 17 millimeter wrench until it's all the way down so what it's doing now is it's forcing that that uh, die into that tubing which is forcing it against the back side of the die and the tool to form that first portion of the flare okay so I gotta keep turning it and try not to bend the tube too much. All right. And I gotta keep going until that tool is fairly flush with the bottom. And you'll know when that happens, it'll just get a lot harder to turn. So you can see that the 
tool is almost there. Okay, it's down. It's it just stops whenever it gets there. So now I take the tool out. This die, this positive die, and I'm going to be thorough and I'm going to put a little dab of lubricant on the other end that forms the actual flare. And run it home with the wrench. And this one, it, it's not going to have to move nearly as far to get there. It's just finishing it off. So it's just a, uh, a little bit of turning. And that's down. Alright, so loosen it up. Back it out. Alright. Uh, get my 10 millimeter out. Now you'll have to loosen these quite a bit to get it out uh, because you've now put a flare on the end of it so let me back them off and the tools opening up nicely all right and there is your beautifully formed I don't know if you can see that but there's a it's a beautifully formed double flare uh, that's just perfect so all we have to do now is to get the um, bring this down and all right and then put this coupler in all right I'm just gonna hand tighten that for now and then put in the patch line. Okay, and now I'm going to turn the camera off, and I'm just going to snug these up. You don't take; it doesn't take uh, gorilla force to get this tight. It's basically it the the um, just the contact between those flares and the little positive flares in the middle of this splice is what seals it. So I just need to get a wrench this size and then this size to uh, snug them down, which I'm going to do. Okay, so snugging these down now. I'll do the easy one first. Okay, it's good and snug, but not much more than that. So same with the top one. Uh, got to get, get it snug. I've got a good piece of, um, I meant to do that, I've got a good piece of tubing that I can use to connect to the rest of the brake system, which I will, uh, I'm going to start bending it around and we'll bring it around to where I need to uh, connect to the good part of the line back here. Uh, so I'm going to be reforming the bends. Although I'm probably not going to try to make this this wacky bend that they put in from the factory that uh, this line started out that way, uh, I'm just going to basically bring it a, a more smooth, uh, organic kind of bend if I can um, around through here, uh, and I'll connect it uh, with probably uh, zip ties to the other line just to keep it floating free and from touching anything which is really what matters uh, this is this is very solid so if I connect to this one this line is not going to go anywhere so I'm just going to start relocating it uh, bending it in place which I probably uh, not going to be able to show you entirely um, but I will uh, show you the end result when I get it done I show okay now I show you the other piece of kit that uh, I bought to do this job uh, it's a brake line bender uh, you can do it by hand I mean some will tell you you can't 
it can be done it's fiddly you got to really take your time because if there's just a little too much pressure you're going to crimp the line and you get to start over so i decided to go ahead and buy one of these uh you can get them online they're probably 20 bucks online go down to your local parts store it's probably closer to 10 so well worth the, the extra cost to do it right uh, it's probably not going to put a tight enough bend to do what I need to do, but at least it'll get me started so that uh, the hand bending I do will be minimal and I'll be able to make those adjustments later. So let me get this out of the box. With, uh, with forms for different size brake lines, uh, what we want here is the 3 16 uh, You'll notice there are holes on the bottom that correspond with this little notch. So I'm going to rotate it so that the 3 16 uh, die form is up and then put the nut on it uh, which really only needs to be finger tight uh, for my purposes here and then I'm ready to start bending bending some tubing. I determined that the first bend needs to be around here so let's just give it a let's give it a squeeze you can see how much nicer that is than doing it by hand and that's about a 90 degree there, so I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze it home. And I've got my first, my first bend. Um, and I am going to have to twist it around, get it into position. Uh, and what I need to do then is try to replicate these other bends in this, uh, in the rest of the line to basically just bring it around, point it in the right direction. So. I'm going to bend this down just a little more and I'm going to put another uh, probably 45 in here and then twist it around and bring it back down parallel to the, the good line that is right here and just a little bit. I've decided it's going to be easier if I drop this, uh, this anchor point that's just by the jacking point inside the gas tank here. I don't know if you can even see it, but uh, it holds uh, other other line, this plastic, white plastic line that I'm going to, um, once I get loose here, I'm going to move it out of the way just, just so I have more room to work. Uh, this should give me the uh, easier shot to get to the brake line too because it'll drop it down where it's easier to easier to reach uh, so you can see that that's just just improved everything and I'll move this white plastic line out of the way uh, so now we've got more room to work and I'm having to improvise a little bit on this bend because I can no longer uh, get both of the silver rollers on here so I'll start the bend with with this and I'm, I'm gonna have to just fiddle around with it and form the uh, angles I need to get it where I need to go um, so you can see it is bendable by hand so I'm gonna get it up in this kind of position and then run it back down here and it's actually pretty close but I'm gonna I'm gonna get it a little closer so that it lies closer to the original line position uh, just for aesthetics and for protection more or less into the position it needs to be in uh, you can see it's going to be running parallel uh, to this other one. Uh, it's going to be kind of up here, running parallel to the uh, to the line that goes to the uh, to the left side. And don't worry about this rust; it's not nearly as bad as the other one. It looks looks worse than it is. Um, so that line's going to last the, the life of the car because it lives in Arizona now so it's done with the, the corrosion stuff uh, but what I'm doing is I'm laying down um, the line parallel to the other line and I will cut this line uh, just behind this little bend you can't really see it but there's a bend right there so I'm gonna cut it right here with the cutter uh, and put the splice in here uh, and I've that should give me plenty of room uh, to do this cut because I can move this line down out of the way now that this anchor is, is loose back here. Um, so the, the whole trick to this is just getting the room you need to work. Uh, so the cut goes right here, uh, splice goes there, then I will just 
reform everything around so that it all fits nicely and snugly and safely up there where it will stay out of danger and uh, keep me on the road for many miles. And I should probably mention that I'm expecting to get a pretty good flow of brake fluid out of this whenever I uh, finally get this cut made. Uh, because basically it's a straight line from here back to the rest of the brake system, which is full of fluid. So whenever this comes off, I'm going to start dribbling all over my garage floor. Uh, so I'll position a uh, strategic rag here so that it will capture that. Um, though Lord knows my garage floor won't notice an extra spill or two. There it is. Okay, so we are leaking. Now, okay, as you can see, it's dripping pretty prodigiously once I cut it. Uh, so, again, don't forget to slide your nut on. And it's got to go back far enough to be out of the way of the tool. Which is actually going to be a little bit of a trick here. I'm going to have to, uh, uh, there's a little bit of a bend there that doesn't really show up. Um, so I'm going to have to form it, bend it just enough to get this nut back over that. And then I can start the process of putting the, uh, the tool back on. I've got the, all right, use that to straighten it out. Okay, it's seated down against the the stop on the internal portion of the tool, uh, tightening down the 10 millimeters, making sure everything's snug. Okay, once you get it snug, it should hold itself in place. Um, but I'm leaking fluid like crazy here, so I've popped off the uh, reservoir up front so that I don't run out, because if you run out, and you get air in the system, then bleeding is going to become a major hassle, and nobody wants that. So uh, make sure you top it off or you have a helper keeping an eye on it to top it off. So hopefully we'll get through this part pretty quick. So, okay, those are nice and snug. Okay, that comes out. I dip my die in the... Uh, in the lubricant slide it home and hopefully it stops leaking a little bit here while I do that okay and very fluids good for you by the way um, so now I'm just gonna start bringing the die home and that's forming the rounded portion of the double flare in the good part of the line. Again, this, uh, you'll want to go until the, the die itself is pretty much down to the face of the tool, that will tell you you're done, uh, and it'll become real obvious. You'll feel the uh, you'll feel the rotation just stop. It's basically, when it's down, it's down, and the Hulk couldn't turn it further. So, um, okay, that's down. Loosen it just that tiny bit. Back the die out dip the conical end here this end into your lubricant uh, although i doubt it's really necessary given the amount of brake fluid that i'm swimming in here um, all right now just bring it down again and this will take a lot less turning to get to that point all you're doing is putting the flare in the middle of the uh, rounded portion I think I'm there. Okay, back it off. Pull this out. Don't have to take it all the way out, but I did. Okay, then get your 10 millimeters and loosen them up. And you'll have to loosen them up quite a bit to get it off because the flare is now 
increasing the diameter. You can see all the fluid coming out of this. It's crazy. Okay. Um, once. Okay. So now again, another perfect flare. The tool is amazing. Um, just get a little debris out of the way here. I uh, have to slide this nut forward over that little bit of a bend. Okay, now the uh, flare is on. The two pieces line up pretty well. Um, so I can insert, not that, I can insert the, uh, the coupling here, the female to female coupling. Um, run it home here, bring it in. And tighten the other end. And I've at least staunched the flow of brake fluid, and now I get to snug this all down. Uh, but you can see essentially that I now have a brake line. It's it's gonna be routed just a little bit different than the original, uh, but perfectly fine and I'll uh, I'll snug it all back down and show you the end results okay the end result here uh, you can see that the uh, the splice is in place it's not touching anything it's it's basically running more or less where the original line did uh, I've got just one um, zip tie to kind of stabilize it so even even if it was just free floating it's not going to get into any trouble uh, and it runs along with the other line uh, back towards the front of the car here. So basically, not the prettiest job in the world, but should be absolutely adequate. By the way, I did start the car and stood on the brake as hard as I could several times uh, after thoroughly cleaning the lines uh, to make sure that when I came back they were still dry, and they were. So uh, basically, uh, the, the system is now... There's the front splice and you can see it's in, in place and it's not touching anything um, and I will just now button all this hardware back up I had to drop the uh, all the stuff I talked about at the beginning of the video uh, and now I have to put it back on and just for grins this is what it looks like with the uh, the subframe sniff stiffener which includes this this part here and this uh, this subframe attachment to the body uh, in place you can see it's basically there would be no getting to any of that uh, with this stuff in place so that just tells you why it wasn't there in the video okay all bolted back together now the stiffener is in the the splash panels are in so that everything's protected and uh, out of the elements um, I'm not particularly worried about the crud building up in there because I live in Arizona and don't drive in the snow very often. So uh, that's probably the last I'll have to do, at least the rear brakes on this car, at least in that area. So uh, wish me luck. Now all that remains is to bleed the brakes to get all the air out of that line. Okay, just an FYI. Uh, to get to the brake reservoir, uh, first you have to take, there's a cap like the one over there that uh, the driver's side uh, cabin air filter lives in. You take that off, then there's a few quarter turn lock nuts and plus one, uh, one screw, this one here, as a matter of fact, um, that holds this, this blast plastic panel that covers this entire area. Uh, you just pull this this uh, seal up off the ridge that it lives on and then the whole thing comes out it it's kind of fiddly the first time you do it but then it's easy um, still a clever place to hide brake reservoir that's why so many people end up pouring brake fluid in the uh, power steering uh, reservoir because they figure it's got to be the brake uh, so the trick here is I want to top off the uh, brake reservoir before I start bleeding because the last thing I want to do is pump air in from the top, which just makes life difficult. 
so I'm going to fill it up nice and full. I got a lot of air to push out, so I'm going to uh, bring it up close to the top. You want to generally be careful about that because when you go to change brakes, you've got to compress the, the pistons back into the caliper, which forces fluid back up into the system, into the reservoir. And if you have too much fluid in here uh, when you do a brake job, you can push it out and it'll just cover this entire area, your beautiful uh, paint that's in there that's pretty disgusting anyway, but you don't want to do that. So uh, don't overfill it, but definitely start out with quite a bit when you're going to be bleeding brakes because with all the air in that long line, it's going to take a fair amount of pumping to get it out. And so it's going to take a fair amount of fluid. Okay, press, release, press, release, press, release, press, wait a second, okay, release, press, Release, press, 